You see, some people will tell you that, oh, my, my Christian life is between me and God. Me and God. If yours is between you and God, Pastor John's own is between him and God. Brother Justin's own is between him and God. Brother Philip's own is between him and God. And all of us decide that every Sunday we will watch TV because it's between us and God. How will the work of God all over the place go on? How will it go on? Because everybody is between us and God. There is no way. It is unbiblical, brothers and sisters. Unbiblical. We need to find ways to do that. So Jesus told them that you should be together. You should bond together and do the work of God. Indeed, we need Jesus to always come to our aid because our strength will fail us. Our energy will fail us. People will fail us. Situations will fail us. And when Jesus comes through, oh, we will be taken care of. Hallelujah. Jesus, come and take absolute control. Once again, we want to welcome all of you to our service today. Our hope and our prayer is that good Lord will speak to each and every one of us needing a cause of his own tone. We know some of our friends are online because I was chatting with them. And we thank you for joining us on Zoom and those who are also with us on Facebook. May the blessings of God be with each and every one of us. Today, our team is Stay in Fellowship. Can you say with me, Stay in Fellowship. And all of us are going to help me do the sermon. So I will ask you questions. Today is a form of discussion because we want to focus on our neighborhood gatherings. And then afterwards, we have a word of prayer. We will finish on time. I pray that the good Lord will speak to all of us in living echoes of his own tongue. Shall we have a word of prayer together? Lord, we need you. And we thank you that you are always with us. At this moment, may you speak to us in living echoes of your own tone. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of us our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The theme, as I mentioned, is stay in fellowship. And today, our focus will be on Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. We will look at only the A part. And the Bible says that we should not forsake the gathering of the saints as some people do. We should not forsake the gathering of the saints, as some people do. I have a question for all of us, brothers and sisters. And then when I realize that you are not looking at me, you are the one I will ask for answers. <laughs> so I have a question. You see, why do you think Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Word that became flesh, the one who can do all things, why do you think that Jesus called people to join him in ministry why didn't he do it alone why do you think that jesus called people to join him in ministry i'm talking not just a prophet i'm talking about the son of god why do you think jesus did that in the answers why do you think jesus did that called people to join him to do ministry to 12 disciples and all those who support him. why he wanted to be in fellowship with them. He wanted people to surround him so that he will be in fellowship with them. Thank you very much. What else? Why do you think Jesus did that? Wow. He wanted to show an example of what is happening in heaven between Jesus, I would say even among Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God. He wanted to demonstrate that example. Any other reason why Jesus did that? Yes. Oh. Today I have theologians in this house. <laughs> he wanted to make sure that after he was no more with us, we will continue to do the ministry that God has given to each and every one of us. Jesus wanted us to be mentored, to be prepared, 
to be taught so that we can continue the work of God. We say that we are the hands and what? Feet of Jesus Christ. Maybe let me take one last one. Yes, Brother Richard. Oh, when you work together, the things that you are doing, they get done better. If you are alone, you are like this building. If we should call only Brother Al and Brother uh, Jackson to build this, it will take us 100 years. <laughs> but because we have other people who are supporting the building, we can finish it on time. So Jesus wanted to make sure. So brothers and sisters, if Jesus, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords himself, called people to join him so that he would stay in fellowship, so that they could be mentored, so that he will be able to show and demonstrate what was happening in heaven to us, then those of us who are followers, what do we need to do? We need to do the same. That is why it is so crucial, it is very, very crucial for the people of God to stay together, to fellowship and to grow together. Because brothers and without that, we will not be able to meet what God has put on our hearts, the mandate that we have been given to do without fellowship, without coming together, without supporting one another. We will not be able to do that. And Jesus demonstrated that. If you read the word of God, and I will show you, I'm sure it will also be on the screen. I will show you a few words. One of them, Bible says that where two or more are gathered in my name, what happens? There I am. Where two or more. So if you are alone, you are sitting here somewhere, that is different. But when we come together, we experience the presence of God. And then as Brother Jackson said, we serve God who is in community. You know, God himself is in community. And that is what the Trinity, you know the Trinity? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God himself is in community. So who told you that you alone, you can stay isolated and live your Christian life? Even God is in community. And you know, Jesus also demonstrated that by calling the disciples and sending them out. If you read Mark chapter 6, verse 6 to 13, Jesus sent the disciples out. He sent them out in what pairs? In pairs, twos. He didn't say they'll go alone. He said that all of you should go with somebody. So, brothers and sisters, the Christian life is not lived in isolation. And that is why the Bible is telling us that we need to hold on to the gathering of the people of God. You remember what happened in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit came upon the people? What, what happened to them? They were all gathered where? Together. They were not living in their own homes. They were all gathered together. And because they were gathered together, the Bible says that the power of the Holy Spirit fell on them. They receive the anointing, the grace, and the ability to be able to do the work of God. Brothers, as, as a church, if we can do the work of God, we need to be in fellowship. Tell the person sitting by you, we need to be in fellowship. And that is why the Bible is saying that we should not forsake the gathering of the saints, as some people do. You see, in our Bible study today, we learned about some of the things that can cause people not to be in fellowship. Sometimes disunity. Sometimes because people don't feel accepted. You know, you go somewhere and you don't feel accepted. Do you want to go there again? You go to the place, nobody wants to greet you. People are doing their own thing. You don't feel accepted. You don't feel belong. And because of that, some people don't feel like being in the presence of God. But in our church, I can assure you, everybody is somebody. Hallelujah. We want all people to come so that we can do the work of God together. Some people don't feel, you know, connected at times because you go to some places and they have what we call clicks. So I have my click, Pastor John's click, Brother Chuck's clicks, Brother Jackson's clicks. So everybody clicks in the church. We don't want that. We want to be connected. We want to gel. We want to be integrated. We want to support one another. Hallelujah. That is important. We are fulfilling the mandate that God has given to each and every one of us. So we need to stay in fellowship and work together. 
you know you know that there are times you may not be feeling well you go out there and you see somebody and you start talking to the person the smile alone changes your day somebody's smile can change your day you sit at home and you will be you'll be looking at yourself pitying yourself you go out there somebody will shake you if you meet brother justin the way he will shake you your body will all will shake <laughs> That, that, that will cause you to be excited. Brothers, it's important for us to stay in fellowship. If I don't even want to bore you, let's all remember what happened during COVID. When you could not talk to people. When you could not connect with people. How did you feel? So, brothers, we need to be in fellowship together. Today, if you don't hear anything, what you want to take home is that you have to stay in fellowship with someone. And then, here at New Life, we want to really make sure that this word is demonstrated in our lives. We have realized that some of us live very far. Some people are in Fredericksburg, some are in Leesburg, all over Northern Virginia. So we have decided to divide our church, group our church into five different gatherings, five, so that everybody will know somebody and be known by others so we have five five different groups so we have those who meet in alexandria area those who live in alexandria if you are online you are part of it those who meet in alexandria area those who meet in Lisbeck area those who meet in fairfax those who meet in starford Fredericksburg, sportsvania area and those who are in woodbridge five we all need to be plugged into this so that we can stay in fellowship with one another. We can stay connected to one another. Because when we do that, that is when we will receive the needed encouragement. That is when we will receive the needed strength. That's why we will be able to live out our Christian life. You see, some people will tell you that, oh, my, my Christian life is between me and God. Me and God. If yours is between you and God, Pastor John's own is between him and God. Brother Justin's own is between him and God. Brother Philip's own is between him and God. And all of us decide that every Sunday we will watch TV because it's between us and God. How will the work of God all over the place go on? How will it go on? Because everybody is between us and God. There is no way. It is unbiblical, brothers and sisters. Unbiblical. We need to find ways to do that. So Jesus told them that you should be together. You should bond together and do the work of God. You see, Christian life has come to a point where somebody will sit and watch online. Online is good. But when you are sick, whether the pastor online will come and visit you is another thing. When you are going through difficulty, whether the church members in that online church, that is somewhere in Texas, will come and visit you. There's no way. That is why we need to have a local community. I believe online is very important. We have online. But we have to stay connected to a religious group, connected to people who are also serving the Lord so that we can use our gifts and our call and to also serve, not always to be served. Did you hear that? Not always to be served. Even Jesus said that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many so today, my prayer and my hope is that all of us will stay in fellowship. We'll be part of this neighborhood gatherings so that we can grow together and live out our lives. We have one of our sisters, you know, our sister uh, who is sitting here, comes all the way from Maryland. You have no idea. Comes all the way from Maryland. Anytime he visits here, she will come to church. You know where? Comes all the way from Maryland. Sometimes we will take the train and we'll make sure that he joins us for church anytime he's here. Sometimes, you know, he speaks French, but still he comes to join the people of God. So you don't have to allow anything to separate you and your connection to other believers. I remember I traveled to Kenya and to do work. And on Sunday, I decided to go to church. When I went to church, they were singing Swahili. I'm telling Swahili. So, me, I don't understand Swahili. But that church was one of the most fulfilling time I had. I don't understand the song, but I saw myself raising my hands. I don't know what they were singing. But I knew that we were worshiping our God and our Father. I left the church filled, even though I didn't understand Swahili. 
God has a way of connecting us. You don't have to leave yourself out. Tell the person sitting by you, don't leave yourself out. We shouldn't let church become a, 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 a chore for us. But we should be able to fellowship together. So I pray. We have testimonies of people who belong to these neighborhood gatherings. We want every church member to be part. We meet only once a, a month. Once a month. So you can join. Some of the meetings are held online. Don't know whether we have some of the pictures. Let me cl- conclude by telling you. Brother I decided, I think in January or so, that he will gather the people around his area in his house. I think he was expecting about four people or so. I was surprised. We went there and a lot of people were there. Look at the house. A lot of people were there. They had joined him and the wife. And I realized that this is Nelly wanted everything to be perfect. And I said, there is no perfection. You let us grow. <laughs> because there will not be perfection. But all these people and some of them, it was the first time I met them. Ask Brother I. They were asking for prayers. Some were sharing their deep needs with us. Thursday, the needs are all over the place. Brothers, that is what Jesus has called us to do. And I pray that all of us who belong to one find ourselves and use our gifts so that we can all grow together to the glory of God. I want to end here. But before I end, I want to just hear one or two testimonies of those who are part of this neighborhood, who have been going. And how it's going for you. Maybe we'll use that to close our sermon today. I know some of you are part of it. I can get one or two people. You share how it's been going for you in your neighborhood. What do we do when we meet together? And then afterwards, we will close our service. So who will be the first person? I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want anybody to be told. I wanted you to come and share what is on your heart. If I don't get anybody, then I will, I will nominate some people. But first, who is ready to do that? Yes. Come forward and come. Brother Ayala, I can see that you are ready. Let's give Brother Ayala a hand as he comes forward. Yes. Uh-huh. And you share briefly, briefly, how it's going for you. Because we want it to be on camera. If you come forward so that the camera can pick you and then we can share uh, together. There are people who are online with us. We want them to be also in fellowship with us. Yes. Does it work? Yes. Oh, it's working. Can you come forward, please? Uh-huh. So, Brother Al is responsible for the Alexandria. Let's hear what's going on in Alexandria. Yes, as uh, Pastor uh, John had indicated, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do uh, in our group was to incorporate the people around our neighborhood, the neighborhood of Alexandria, into our meeting group. Uh, that is why I wanted to meet at my house uh, once in uh, at the end of December. So I was planning on meeting in the park adjacent to my house, but God had other plans for us. So it was not 50 degrees outside, but about 38. So I had to move the plan into my house. Now, during that time, I would have never thought that I would be reading the 23rd Psalm in Spanish because my Spanish and my chi are about the same. So, but God had other plans for our group and our group instead of the four that I promised that we were going to get at the beginning of the year, there were 14 of us and eight of them were new people to the church. Amen. 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 One gathering he was expecting four people and ended up 14. Eight of them were not part of the church, by the way, in the community. That is how we connect with other people in our community. Brother Al, may God bless you and all those who are part of this neighborhood. Let's take one more. One more. I know Stafford and uh, uh, Fredericksburg, they've been meeting too. We have some wonderful testimonies on video, but because of time, we'll not play today. We will put them all together and then send the videos to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a year ago, we decided that uh, part of this church, we were going to plant these five network neighborhoods. How many knew what they were going to be? Anybody? No. 
but God did. So in the Triangle, Stafford, Fredericksburg, and Spotsylvania area, we did that. We connected with some brothers and sisters down in that area, and they opened up their, their church uh, for us to come in. So we did, and we've met for one year. Say amen. amen. For sure. And we met in person. And it's amazing the people we've connected with. But two things, right, for me personally, to actually see not knowing, but to see God move in other people's lives and you could be a part of it. To see little kids connect and, and they're connecting with uh, the teenagers and the adults together and they're fellowshipping and having fun. To see people you didn't know before say, I, I didn't know this place was here, but I'm so grateful, right? Just people you just met, didn't know them before, but connected in community. And then lastly, for me personally, for me personally, to see little kids to be bold and to be confident in themselves to just speak and share their heart and to connect back to God and to say, yes, I've enjoyed having conversation with other kids and the fun and also with the big grown-ups too. I've enjoyed that. And I, it's just good for my heart. And I pray that as you also connect, it'll be good for your heart too. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. So we have five neighborhoods. Please find where you belong. If you don't know, you can contact me or any of the leaders. We will make sure that you are plugged in. And secondly, participate in the activity. Sometimes it's online. It's once a month. Once a month. And then thirdly, just invite somebody also to be part of it. I will close with uh, one of the people I met at Stafford and his own testimony. He said his name is called Brother Harold. And Brother Harold says that I didn't know something like that is in this place. The guy was talking and was crying. Those of you who were there, I mean, I'm not making it up. He was crying and said, I didn't know this was here. He said that, look, because of loneliness, a lot of people are dying. And he, he talked about the fact that the, a neighbor, what happened to the neighbor, Brother Justin? Both of them committed suicide. It's a neighborhood close to where Brother Jackson lives. Committed suicide. Loneliness. Brothers and sisters, we have a need in our community. We need each and every one of us to be part of this. So that others can also come to the saving grace of our God and our Father. I pray that this God will bless you and keep you. This God will encourage this church to continue. Sometimes it will be difficult. You will go, you start, you will not see a lot of people. It doesn't matter. Jesus started his ministry with 12 people. It doesn't matter. Numbers is not the ultimate. The commitment and the passion is. And I pray that the good Lord will help us. For us to achieve this to the glory of God. May I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray together. I just want you to just say a word of prayer. And thank God for what you have heard today. And ask God to help you so that you can also be part of whatever God is doing with us and through us in this church. Just commit yourself and pray for the five neighborhoods that the good Lord will help us so that we can be able to minister, to touch lives, and to draw others to the saving grace of our God and our Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we want to thank you for this very blessed time. Thank you for opportunity for your people to be guarded. Thank you for the word you have given to us, the command that we should not neglect the gathering of the saints of the people of God. We pray that, Lord, you grant us grace. Sometimes a lot of things can come between us and our connection. May you remove every barrier, racial barrier, economic barrier, social barrier, so that we can together serve you. Pray that your blessings will be upon all these five communities. Let them grow to draw others to your saving grace. We thank you for this and all the many blessings you give us always through the name that is above all names, even in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus. And the people of God here and those on now will join me to say a bigger Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good.